If you've spent any amount of time wondering about solar and if it's something worth doing or that you would be able to do on your home or homestead, then I wanted to share our story of what we have learned and experienced over the last year in case it's helpful in your journey. We just finished up week six of our homestead year and not much happened. It's still winter. I did screen compost this week, starting to make all the ingredients for more of my seed starting soil. And I moved my onions outside. They were under grow lights in an upstairs bathroom and they got too tall for the grow lights. So I moved them outside. So they are enjoying more sunshine. Um, I am bringing them in at night. I don't want to run the greenhouse heater yet. So if it goes below freezing, I am bringing them in at night for a few nights until they're hardened off. But back to solar. Now you could say that we were standing at the edge looking in for a while and pondering and studying. And I'm not sure if we jumped in or if we weren't pushed in from behind. So it really feels like as we went through the journey and then as we could look back while going through the journey, that the Lord was leading us and preparing us and preparing different infrastructure we would need that we didn't even realize we would need um, to be able to have a solar system set up at our home. My apologies if you hear any background noise. It is raining outside and I am sitting in the quietest place that's dry that I can find. And that is my car right now. There are some indoor renovations going on on this rainy day at home. But prior to building this house in 2014, we were already more self-sufficient minded. I had already been doing a lot of my grocery shopping in bulk with a co-op. I had been cooking and baking from scratch. We had started to try a little bit of food growing, but we hadn't done more than, you know, four by eight raised bed. And we were heating our home with a wood stove for several years. And when we built this home, we incorporated more stuff into this house that would help us to be a little more self-sufficient, a little more independent. And in this house, we installed a wood cook stove so that it wouldn't just heat the home, but we could also cook on top and bake inside in the oven. And we also designed this house with an electric um, panel, which is kind of called a critical loads panel. So you have your one main big panel and then the smaller panel, it was smaller in the beginning, but we've since made it bigger since we made the solar system. But the smaller panel just had you know, the well, the fridges, the freezers, some living room lights, just like things you would really want to run with a generator if you were out of power for a while. We also put a simple pump on our drilled well so that if for any reason we had no electricity, no generator, we could still pump water out of the well. And my husband plumbed that to the house so that when you pump the water, it's actually filling the pressure tank in the house. So you can turn faucets on inside, you can shower, flush toilets, just from pumping the well outside. And for the sake of redundancies, if electric failed, generator failed, simple pump failed, we had a Lehman's drilled well bucket. We could um, lower down into our drilled well and just retrieve water by hand with that. Over time, I also purchased different tools that were helpful to me in my duties in the kitchen or with laundry. Uh, A wheat grinder, I had a washing laundry set up that didn't require electricity. Uh, Of course, with a laundry line. I think in 2021, I had purchased a sun oven for baking in the seasons when it was too hot to want to light a fire indoors. I'm sure that most all of us have gone occasionally for times without electricity, whether from weather events or, you know, just something just happens and the power goes out for half a day or a day or two days. We lost power once for a whole week from a hurricane when we were younger and we were used to that occasional loss. But after we had lived in this house for four or five years, we realized a pattern that this new power company that served where we were at, they were not very consistent with their electricity and they were not very quick at getting the power back on when it went off. So we were having long power outages, one to three days at least, maybe three, four, five times a year. And randomly, like it just a little bit of wind would blow and the power would go out. And that is when we started getting more interested in solar. And my husband was 
looking at more things online. Um, we had someone come, the people that we had bought our wood stove from, we had them come and explain some solar options, some options with solar water heaters. And just looking at the expense then, we knew it was something that was not gonna be in our budget, maybe ever. And we realized all that really mattered was if we could keep access to water, which meant we had to be able to pump water from the well, and if we could keep our fridges on. Like if we could do those two things, for long term, if we had to, two, three weeks, then we could still get by with with losing a lot of the other comforts we were used to. We still had the tools and the skills to be able to keep going with mostly day-to-day -day normal life. So what we chose to do at that time was just buy a, a slightly larger portable generator, uh, one that we thought was going to be a good one, but we found out later it did not have a good... I think sine wave is the word. It didn't have clean power. So long-term use of it was gonna damage our electronics in the house. Our mind was at ease with the purchase of that generator. So we moved on to working on other projects. We built the metal shop or garage in February of 2020. And we did run the electric from the house over to the garage so that it would have electricity in it. And then in early 2021, we gave our backup generator um, a permanent location next to the garage. Previously, if the power would go out, we would have to get the generator from the shed, move it over to the house, plug it in and run it, and then put it away when power came back. And now what my husband done is he had given it a permanent spot and he wired it in through the electric. So it still used the same underground lines to come back to the house and would power the critical loads panel that way. And I haven't even started talking about having solar yet, but I'm giving you the background on all the different little steps that we were taking for years before that actually helped us to set up the solar in a very smooth and easy way. But we had been buying more battery power tools, chainsaws, different stuff, and I had been stocking up on propane for canning needs. Towards the end of 2021, we had even installed a new water heater. It's a heat pump water heater and it uses less electricity than a traditional water heater does. Well, here comes January 2022 and we had an icy winter storm that knocked out power for a complete week everywhere in our area. Now, with all of our redundancies in place, we should have been fine. We had the wood stove for heating and cooking. We had a generator so that we could alternate between pumping well water and cooling the fridges and freezers. But unfortunately, one day into the power outage, we had issues with the generator. So we turned to the simple pump for water because the generator wasn't working. And the simple pump worked for about half a day and then that had an issue and broke. So after that, myself and the kids, we were collecting snow for two days to melt it on the wood stove to use for all of our non-water, non-drinking purposes. And the cold foods we just put outside to stay frozen because the air was cold enough. Finally, the generator, um, which we've since replaced, worked enough to keep us minimally operational until the grid power was restored. That fun week definitely pushed my husband over the edge. He went ahead and ordered a new generator, still a portable one, but it was a little bigger, better engine, and it was not going to have the same issues that the other one had. But he also started spending many, many hours researching information on solar systems. And we are so blessed to be living in this time of YouTube and being able to learn from people all around the country, all around the world, and people sharing their knowledge. And he learned a whole lot. Once he had a good foundation of understanding of what was needed, and he'd researched uh, the cost of materials, he'd watched lots of reviews on different materials and decided which ones were going to work best for us, then he started ordering everything that we would need piece by piece. We knew by early February that we were going to owe less on taxes than we expected. Uh, my husband is self-employed and so we save money all year long to pay taxes and because we were going to owe so much less we had this chunk of money and that's what we were going to use to start this project with and to buy everything. We do choose to live a debt-free lifestyle so with that money we were able to purchase one pallet of solar panels which was 30 panels we purchased the inverters and i believe three batteries and some of the wiring he knew that he would need 
and he started constructing the building for the solar panels, or at least 20 of them to go on. He figured if I'm going to have to build something that's going to look like a roof, it might as well be the roof over a barn that I can store stuff in. Over a six week period in his free time, he was able to do all of the construction and installation for that initial 20 panels over the solar shed and installing the inverters in the shop and doing all the wiring. We were very grateful afterwards. We had spent many nights debating where to put the inverters and we ended up choosing the shop. And afterwards we were really glad we did because they're pretty loud when they're running. So they would have been too loud if we had had them in the laundry room in our home. And of course, during all this time, in the evenings, he was still spending time learning more, reading more, realizing more tools he needed to do more of the work as he was doing it. But on April 6th, he flipped the switch and for the first time, we were connected with solar power and we were running our minimal things. We were running the water heater, the well pump, the pressure tank, and some kitchen lights and living room lights and the fridges and freezers. They were all running on solar on April 6th. That was just the beginning of our education on how to use the power. And we found out we really had plenty of power during the day while the sun was shining, but it would drain pretty quickly off those three batteries at night or if it was a completely cloudy day. So we still spent weeks or months having the solar turned off and the grid turned all the way on going back and forth. Over the summer, he constructed the second array, which faces more southeast. The larger one with 20 panels faces straight south. The smaller array has a little bit easterly tilt to it. So he constructed that. And around that time, sometime in the summer, I don't remember, they expanded the solar credits so that now you could get 30% of what you spent back as a tax credit um, off your taxes. So what we would owe in 2023, we could actually get a deduction worth 30% of whatever we spent on our solar system in 2022. So we went ahead and bought three more batteries because we realized we were really going to need more batteries if we wanted to be able to use the power consistently through the nights and through cloudy days. So remember, we really only wanted something that could run really minimal stuff in our house. That was our original intent. We spent the funds that we had available to buy the initial setup items, but the solar panels we bought were actually enough to run the whole house. Probably not the HVAC, not the heat pump, but it was enough to run the whole house. What was lacking was batteries to complete the system to be able to run the whole house. So over the end of summer into fall, my husband spent time learning about how to build his own batteries because it's less expensive to build batteries than to buy. And we'd used all the funds we had. We didn't have any more to spend on buying more batteries that were pre-built. So by fall, we'd saved enough. He bought the items, he built a battery. And each time we would add a new battery set, it was amazing how much it would expand how long our power lasted, how many more days it could go, it was cloudy. And just before the end of 2022, probably in November, early December, he built a second battery, as well as buying six more panels, which we put on top of the shop, and they have more of a westerly turn to them. Just to complete the inverter system, that's the most in solar panels the inverters can hold. So we've got 36 panels now, we have the equivalent of around 11 of the original batteries he bought. And I'll put all the numbers in the screen for those that want to know all the kilowatts and um, battery hours that we have. Before the year was over, he was able to help his dad install the same system on his house. And our solar system is not connected to the grid. It does not feed electricity back to the grid. It's completely independent. Um, any power that we have is ours and if we don't use it it just goes into the ground in the winter we use everything we have we know we're going to have excess power in the summer and so we are going to be experimenting more with this in the summertime and seeing how much air conditioning we might even be able to run 
with the power. So we're still learning and testing and experimenting. The way it's been in the winter, we have been able to run completely off the grid, no grid power at all, as long as the sun comes out every other day, every two days, even on cloudy days, the sun peaks out enough to charge your batteries. So it would have to be super dark all day long, kind of like today. It's constant rain all day long to not get any extra power. So we're still learning just how long our batteries will last, how many days we can go without the sun. The last year has been quite an unexpected ride. It was never something that we pictured. Maybe we dreamed about it. My husband was interested in solar, but it happened so fast. So for those that know us, they know we are not the kind of people to jump into anything, which is why I know we did not jump into solar. And we also know God doesn't push us into anything, but I certainly can look back and see how he has led us step by step and prepared us and had systems in place so that when we were ready, we could get it done and get it done quickly. And one thing my husband was worried about when he started was that he wouldn't know how to take care of the system, how to run it, how to handle problems. But what he realized and what he's thankful for is that because he built it himself the whole way through, he understands all of it. Um, he hasn't really had to deal with any problems yet that he can't handle. He's been able to read the manual. He's been able to look things up online and even talk to people that sold him different parts of the equipment if he ever has any issues. So he's really grateful that he hasn't come up against any hurdles yet that he can't handle. If you're considering making solar a part of your power source for your home, uh, a couple of the things that we would recommend based on our experience and our perspective is number one, don't borrow money to do it. Make sure, first of all, I hope you're working towards being debt free if you're not yet, but definitely have cash to spend when you do it. And secondly, if you're going to hire a company to do it for you, I hope you find a really good one that's got really good support afterwards because you're going to have a whole new lifestyle and lots of new things to live with. It's not always all automatic. It's not like having an automatic car. You just put it and drive and go. You're going to have issues and you're going to need to know how to fix them. And you, I hope you have a company that has good service afterwards. If you want to go like my husband did and learn it all on your own, the resources are out there on YouTube. There are a ton of awesome people that have put lots of free hours of videos out there that you can learn with if you're willing to put the time into that. We are certainly still like little toddlers in the field, but if you have questions that we can help give you answers with, we're happy to do that. And I am working on tracking all of our electrical costs and changes over the last two years and then month by month this year to see how much our electric bill is reduced. I love numbers and spreadsheets and seeing the impact over time of using solar versus electricity from the grid. Uh, and the one thing that my husband has joked about is when someone is interested in buying, say, a whole house backup generator, you know, it's for being able to take care of yourself when the power is down and for a little bit of independence and security. And I don't know that we've ever heard anyone ask, well, how long is it going to take you to pay back the cost of that generator? What's the investment? Like how many years do you have to run that to get your money back? So it's kind of a funny question when people ask that for the solar system, because yes, you can calculate how long it would take if the electric costs were to stay the same and your usage were to stay the same. You could say in X amount of years, I will have paid back the cost of the system. But our main reason for us for getting it was for security and for knowing that we had another backup source for electricity should the grid not be available. So I'm going to have numbers that I'm putting together. If you'd like to see them, if you'd like to know how our costs have changed and how my lifestyle um, as a wife and mom is a little different and how I plan my days differently, let me know and I will take time to put together another video with some information on how my day-to-day -day lifestyle and how our electrical bill has changed. Thanks for stopping in. I hope you found at least one useful thing in our story today. 
We'll be back in another week, and we hope you have a lovely time until then. Remember to live joyfully.